In chapter two, we are going to discuss development environment in regard to customization of an e-commerce. As I mentioned earlier, Dynamics X2012 R2 includes an online starter store, which we know it as an e-commerce store. It's built based upon Microsoft SharePoint Server 2013. You can create your own online store by using some elements of the starter store and customizing other elements and adding even your own. Throughout this course, we are talking about all different possibilities. Before we get started, obviously, we have to have adequate tools. We need to have Visual Studio 2012, available tools and client components that are allowing us to be able to extend Office and SharePoint 2013 components. You need to also install Retail SDK from the Dynamics X Media. And as you see this slide, by the time they designed this course, they were referring to Cumulative Update 1. As you are aware, I recommend to install latest Cumulative Update either 6 or 7. 7 was released about a month ago and you can take advantage of it. However, the images that I'm going to demonstrate on is based on Cumulative Update 6. Each Cumulative Update provides more functionality and more operations will be added into the retail solution. Therefore, as part of your development environment, you have to have a commerce runtime services solution as well, which the capabilities of extending it would be available by installing the retail SDK and you should have a storefront solution already. If you don't have it, you have to first install a storefront solution and then you can do the customization based on. In this course, we assume we are working with an existing storefront solution, which is based on a Contoso, but then later on, we discuss exactly how to install and implement our own storefront. So before we get started, we assume that the retail online store has been already installed and properly configured as a single server form in our demonstration. Retail online channel includes components that you must have in order to set up an online sales channel or online retail channel, we know it, that uses Microsoft SharePoint products. So that has already been implemented. You can use this component in order to integrate the Dynamics AX into the SharePoint sites. And as I went through the previous session, I showed you how those entities are being mapped. You can administer the online channel by using Microsoft Dynamics AX client. The prerequisite is to install and configure retail components of Dynamics X2012. And as part of the installation, there is a separate component introduced in Dynamics X2012 R2. They call it the online retail channel. Contoso test data is required for you in order to be able to achieve some of the exercises and labs within this course. In regard to installation and configuration of Dynamics X2012 R2, you can refer to additional resources, such as MSDN or perhaps e-learning or some other websites such as guide to learn In order to install Visual Studio 2012, you need to also install Microsoft Office Developer Tools for Visual Studio 2012. As part of the VM that you download from partner source, for whatever the reason, that component perhaps have not been installed or has not been installed properly. So as part of my demonstration, I show you how to install that. And then I show you how to install SharePoint Client Component. Of course, the SharePoint Client Component and Visual Studio 2012 has already been installed in your VM. The only issue within the existing VM as of now is literally the installation of Office Developer Tools for Visual Studio 2012. So when you install the Visual Studio 2012, you have the capability to add an additional component. We know it as a developer tool for Office and SharePoint Client Components. You receive all these templates and tools that you must have in order to develop and customize retail online store site. If you don't have this component, you won't be able to customize. After you install Visual Studio 2012, you download and install Microsoft Office Developer Tools for Visual Studio 2012 from a web installer platform. In order to install the SDK, you require to have the Dynamics AX DVD. The Retail Software Development Kit is one of the component as part of the Dynamics AX. So therefore, that includes sample codes and templates that indeed is available for both point of sale and commerce runtime. And it also provides online store starter templates. The folder will be created under whoever you have logged on as under documents. The two main folders that is a major focus point for customization development training classes would be pause plugins and commerce runtime folder. In this course, we are focusing more on the commerce runtime folder. There is a separate training for pause development and customization, which focuses on pause plugins folder. After that, as I mentioned, you need to install the cumulative update. And of course, I have updated this slide. And as you notice here, 
you do have the adequate and additional information in regard to available source code and extra perhaps templates that are available, enhanced operations that are available. You do have commerce runtime, online channel, and pause plugins. So the online channel is a folder that gets created by installing the online channel components. Commerce runtime services solution can be launched by opening up that specific directory on the retail SDK within the documents subdirectory under the users you have logged on as in order to install that SDK. And there is a subdirectory called commerce runtime. Within that, there is a services folder. And under that, there's a services.sln solution file. You can open that up. As you see, the slide shows three separate projects. However, if you have CU6 or cumulative of the six, there are runtime services, pricing engine, and SDK services projects only. You do not have services.messages. So depending on which exact configuration of Dynamics X you're dealing with, you might get two or three projects. The services messages have been injected into the actual SDKs. The storefront solution is also available in case you would like to use this specific solution in order to configure and extend the way that the storefront operates. The storefront solution is on the storefront directory, which is available beneath online channel. As part of an SDK, you receive that information as well. When you open this solution, depending on the configuration of your SharePoint, you might receive a message indicating whether or not you would like to upgrade your solution into the SharePoint 2013. So once this upgrade is completed, the solution cannot be deployed to the SharePoint 2010. So therefore, the solution of the storefront was designed originally for 2010. However, by the time that Dynamics X 2012 R2 was introduced, the SharePoint 2013 was under the process in order to be added as part of our online channel and therefore by the time they release the product now Microsoft suggests you to use the SharePoint 2013 which has a lot more functionality and it runs a lot smoother. So therefore the projects from the SDK as soon as you open them up and if you are launching it within the environment that the online channel have been published into the SharePoint 2013 automatically is asking you to deploy it and upgrade it into that new version and is only one way you cannot undo it as far as the solutions that you have you need to perhaps use the sn configuration utility as part of a visual studio it stands for a strong name or alternatively you could take advantage of visual studio and by going through the project property you need to either use an existing key or create a brand new key and sign your library prior to building it so before you compile it, you need to use the signing key in order to make this assembly to be compiled as a strong name. The reason you do that, for online channels, you need to place this assembly into the global assembly cache. And without strongly naming it, you cannot place that assembly into the global assembly cache. So in order to do this, of course, I have a demonstration for all this. I will show you shortly. You need to create a new SNK file or you can of course have different extensions if you like and in order to create it you could either use the SN utility or we know it as a strong name tool or use the Visual Studio for it which I'll show you both and then save it under a particular directory which we know it as a retail SDK and then extract the thumbprint of the strong name and how do we do that? We create a sample class library in order to be able to use that key and then after we compile this then we use the SN utility by using the dash capital TP is case sensitive for your information it will return a token and that token of that is specific is strongly named needs to be copied and be pasted into a specific management shell or we know it as a commandlet this is indeed a PowerShell script that you need to identify the token of your key and run that specific script in order to be able to make sure that all projects and all the assemblies will be compiled under the SDK directory. The reason you do that because you need to make sure that all of these specific libraries will be placed in the global assembly cache in case you're going to use it within the online store. So therefore there's a specific key, we know it as a strong name key hash, wherever on that specific script at the time of installation of retail SDK it actually has a text says insert the token here you need to copy the token that you have generated by running the SN exe dash capital T lowercase p and the path for your project DLL then you can paste it right here by running this specific script it would take several minutes 
and this process adapts any source code with the version references to this specific uh, strong name. Then you need to map a network drive in order to be able to access the files that the Microsoft SharePoint server uses in order to be able to support the online channel. First, you must make sure that you have a web distributed authoring or web dev and versioning, of course. They call it distributed authoring and versioning, or as short we know it as a web dev service, has been already installed and running on your computer. If you don't have that service, you need to enable a feature called desktop experience, and that automatically includes the web dev service for you. So if you don't have that, you need to go to services, verify to have it or not. If you don't have it, make sure that you add the feature called desktop experience. And in order to install the desktop experience, you have to go to the server manager and add a feature. And part of this feature, there is a, a specific settings called desktop experience. And by clicking next, you install that. Needless to say, you have to make sure that this service is configured as type automatic. And when the computer starts automatically, the service should be started for you to be able to manage the online store. And also in order to map a network drive, you have the capability after you publish the online store to map to that specific URL location in order to be able to access those directories. So the drive appears in the list on the computers and then you could manage all those specific files and navigate to it and modify them. These are the requirements in regard to the development environment. And needless to say, some of the files might be hidden, so make sure that you clear the option named Hide Protected Operating System Files in order to see all the files available because certain files are on the app data directory, on the local, and under that specific app data directory, under the username, that specific folder is hidden. So some of the files that we are going to modify will be available under that folder. I'd like to show you a demonstration here. Whatever I talked about, you see it now in action. As part of the first section of the demonstration, as we see, we are going to discuss the commerce runtime services solution. The first thing we need to do, we need to go to the users and on the administration, on the My Documents, I verify that the retail SDK has been installed. If you do not have this directory, you need to refer to installation and configuration training in order to be able to install the retail SDK of Dynamics AX. As you see currently, I have Commerce Runtime, Online Channel, and Pause Plugins. So let's go and do some navigation. If I double click on the Commerce Runtime, as you see, I have References, Samples, and Services. If I double click on the References, you see a list of existing assemblies that are being used as part of this SDK in every single one of the solutions that are already available and we can use in order to extend. One of the information that we talk about would be Payment Connector. But if you take a look at the samples, you have a sample database for the CRT, and then you have a sample for promotions. There's a separate sample in order to deal with the promotion services. However, under the services, you have a variety of different interfaces that you can override, such as the way that you can manage the address, or the way you manage the charges, or currencies, or product dimensions. But in either case, if I open up this solution, automatically gets launched within the Visual Studio of your choice, either 2010 or 2012. And as you see, all of these projects are available. You have a pricing engine, and under that, you have the SDK services. There are two solutions as part of this SDK for the commerce runtime. This is a cumulative of the six, by the way. The second demonstration shows the storefront solution. Again, under the retail SDK, there is a subdirectory called online channel. And under that, you have indeed the demo data, a references, and the main directory, which we are interested in order to look into it, a storefront. The concept of a storefront gives me the capability in order to use the starter template that is available here. And as a matter of fact, Microsoft has provided a storefront template for me in order to organize my solution based on available services and whatever is necessary in order to deploy a brand new online channel. As you see, if I have not installed the Office components and SharePoint 2013 addition for the development tools within this Visual Studio, it will prompt me with this specific message indicating that you do not have this specific component and is required in order to be able to use this storefront. So if I would like to add it, of course, you will receive a message box for every single one of those projects that are available within the solution. If I click OK and I start communicating with this project and let it run, you notice that you might get multiple messages of the same type. As part of this specific demonstration, I'd like to show you how to fix this issue because obviously you have to address that specific need. I need to go to the Microsoft.com and on the downloads, I go to the platform web page and I install this specific Microsoft Web Platform Installer. 
As an alternative, you could have gone to the IIS, and that specific piece of information of web platform install is already available there. But I wanted to make sure I have the latest. That's why I directly can go into this specific page. And by clicking on a free download, automatically I can install it. And by running this web installer platform is a mean of looking to available components in order to be able to download into my operating system. As you see, the web platform installer 4.6 is the latest that I've been working with. Automatically shows the spotlight or you can search by products or existing applications. What I like to do, search by a particular product name and as you see, I find Microsoft Office Developer Tools for Visual Studio 2012. I select Add because I like to install this particular component and click Install. The license agreement will be available and it shows me the prerequisites and different stages of the installation and configuration of every single subcomponent. I accept this agreement and the process will go through and it will take a few minutes obviously. As soon as this progress is finished, then we can go about and relaunch our solution. We have to just verify that indeed this specific configuration has successfully installed. As you notice, the prerequisites of this particular product has been also installed, such as Microsoft Visual Studio 2010 tools for Office Runtime Language Pack, Workflow Manager 1.0, Workflow Manager Tools, and Microsoft Office Developer Tools for Visual Studio 2012. So I click Finish, and this time I no longer require to add any additional components. Of course, hypothetically, you could add more if you like to, but I don't need to. I go back to the storefront, and this time I launch a storefront solution. And as you notice, this time it tries to load the application, and it's initializing. And as I mentioned as part of my training, since the project was based on 2010, it prompts me to say, would you like to upgrade this project to SharePoint 2013 solution? And of course, once you upgrade it, the solution can be deployed into the SharePoint 2010. Since we are going to work with SharePoint 2013, I select yes. But you have to take extra caution in case you don't use SharePoint 2013, but you're using Visual Studio 2012. So therefore, after I went through all these messages, literally the solution is now available for further analysis and I can use it as a startup page for online channels. However, we need to also uh, specify a strong name for code signing. There are two methods in order to do that. One is using the SN utility, the other one is using the Visual Studio. So in order to go to the Visual Studio command prompt, I log on as an administrator. First, I resize the font and I change the screen text for you to have a better viewability on my screen. And as you see, the first thing I type in is the letter S and N, as in Nancy. And by putting the dash question mark, it offers me all available parameters, one of which is dash K, which is case sensitive. This will generate a new key pair for a specified size and write it into an output file. So let's go ahead and generate one. I call it SN dash K and a specify a name. Then I copy this specific public key and place it under the retail SDK. So let's go ahead and change the directory, or I could alternatively create that key directly to that specific retail SDK. But in this scenario, I made it right here, and I copy it, and I paste it into the location in which I've installed the retail SDK, which is under My Documents and Retail SDK. When I paste it in here, in order to get the token, I need to create a sample application. But prior to that, you need to perhaps take a look into a specific configuration, which we know it as a Microsoft Management Console. And as you see on the Microsoft Management Console, you could verify to see whether or not you have any certificate already available. You could indeed use that if you like to. But here is not necessarily talking about the certificate that I need to use within the site or perhaps install any services. What I like to do, I have the capability in order to create a simple key infrastructure to just compile my solution. So there is a difference between a certificate and this SNK. Just wanted to show you that. We don't need the certificate. We need just the SNK file. So in order to provide the token off of this uh, specific key, I create a class library and I name it something more intuitive and I place it right where I had the retail SDK so I can access that library. And after I created the class, I don't even have to implement any specific code into it. I specify the name of this library and it will be placed on the retail SDK. I can indeed do a way of associating this project with my key. 
by clicking on the signing tab I can select sign the assembly and choose uh, that specific key of my choice which is happened to be on the retail SDK that's one way to do it you create the key within the SN utility and then you browse to the directory in which you have that key and then you compile that's one way to do it or alternatively you have the capability in order to go ahead and generate the key right from here which I, sh I show you that too make sure that you change the configuration to release or debug it makes no difference for my testing purposes because it's signed the assembly either way and as you see I make sure that this gets generated I just need this DLL in order to get the token however as an alternative you have the capability to create a brand new key right within here so you can select new and that automatically asks you a key file so if you don't want to use the SN you could have specified a new key this way I show you both ways not necessarily you need to do it twice anyhow I compile this again and it provides the same exact path to the same DLL but I made a completely different key now the difference here is when you created the key within the Visual Studio that key will be created and will be placed under the project directory versus creating an SN and generating a key off of the SN utility will generate the key in wherever you like as you notice I've already ran the command and I call it SN-TP with a lowercase intentionally and as you notice the value cannot be interpreted however if I change the lowercase t to capital T you notice that the case sensitivity makes a difference the public key hash and thumbprint will be available however I'm not interested in that large binary value I'm interested in the public key token which happens to be starting with 3A390 so what I do I copy that token by marking it and pressing enter that gets placed into the clipboard and then I navigate to a directory in which I have the retail SDK and under that there is a specific PowerShell script they call it update assembly identity I edit it and that automatically opens up the PowerShell ISE or editor mode that is available if I navigate through this specific file as you notice there is a specific variable that you have to set the value for we know it as a dollar sign new a strong name key hash which was empty so all I need to do I paste the value that I brought over from that library in here paste it here and then I execute this script right within here this might take a few minutes and what it does it says that are you sure you would like to run this it will run this and as a matter of fact it takes a look into retail SDK and it strongly name all available sources that can be placed in a global assembly cache so I give it a few minutes at the end you'll see that there are three paths available in this blue area at the bottom of this page then you have to map a network drive to the SharePoint 2013 file for online stores they are already mapped in my demonstration and before mapping you have to make sure that you go to the administrative tools and you open up the services icon or alternatively in your VM you might have a shortcut to it you have to search for a specific service called web client and you have to make sure that this service indeed is running and it's set to automatic as you see this specific service enables Windows based program to create access or modify internet based files because you're going to author and customize the e-commerce solution I make sure the startup type is set to automatic and is running then I make sure that the directory in which all of those specific SharePoint online stores have been published have a map network drive as you notice in my specific demonstration in this VM I do have one retail product catalog which is mapped to drive X and I have two different retail publishing portal one for Contoso and one for Fabricam Contoso is linked to Z Drive and Fabricam is linked to Y Drive but they're using the same retail product catalog so I just wanted to make sure that I have access the file structure of the SharePoint sites these are the requirements before we get started with customization of SharePoint solution by going through this demonstration we pretty much are done with chapter 2